Hello and uh, welcome all of you students once again. So today we will see the uh, remaining part from the uh, unit four. And uh, in the unit four, only the part related to the uh, deadlock was remaining, and that already last time we have started. So last in the last lecture we have seen what is the deadlock and the uh, different examples of the deadlock. as well as the different condition uh, responsible for the deadlock because of what uh, which different reasons and the conditions deadlock can occur that uh, part last time we have covered so today we will discuss about the various deadlock handling strategies uh, actually there are the four strategies are there out of that four today we will discuss the two and remaining two will be discussed in the next lecture so in the today's lecture we will discuss about the deadlock handling strategies like deadlock prevention and the deadlock avoidance okay so uh, deadlock uh, uh, handling strategy in the sense how we can uh, avoid the deadlocks or how the uh, system can uh, uh, avoid the deadlocks okay uh, how the operating system can play their part to uh, avoid these kind of deadlock okay so that part today we will discuss so in that uh, as i said there are the four main strategies are there you know to handle the deadlock and not let the deadlock to be occur and even if the deadlock occurs then how we can recover from that deadlock that all the four techniques consist of this uh, deadlock handling strategies so in that first is the deadlock prevention uh then we have the deadlock avoidance then fourth uh, we have the deadlock detection and the recovery and the last we have the deadlock ignorance so today we'll discuss about the deadlock prevention and the deadlock avoidance okay so already in the last lecture we have discussed what is the concept of deadlock so deadlock is the nothing but the situation uh, where the execution of two or more processes get halted or the block because each process hold some resource and wait for the another resource which is held by some other process so same thing last time we have discussed with the different examples and i have also shown you here also so here in this figure you can easily see process p1 hold the resource r1 and it wait for the resource r2 which is already held by the process p2 so process p1 is holding the resource r1 and it is waiting for the resource r2 to complete its processing but this r2 is already holded by the p2 in the similar way process p2 is holding the resource r2 and it is requesting the resource r1 but r1 is already allocated to the p1 okay so in this case none of these two process can complete and release the resources and because of that both of this process has to be keep waiting infinitely okay and as they goes on waiting infinitely that particular situation is called as a deadlock situation so here here in this example p1 and p2 are in the deadlock because each of them need the resources of others as you can see the p1 need the resources of p2 and p2 need the resources of p1 to complete their execution but neither of them is willing to give up their resources neither of this p1 uh willing to give the release the resource neither p2 is willing to uh, release the resource and because of that the waiting time goes on increasing and that is being considered as a infin infinite waiting and that is being uh, considered as a deadlock in case of the operating system so now what we have to discuss how this deadlock can be handled can we uh, prevent the deadlock before it occur or even after uh, occurring of the deadlock can we also can the system also recover from that deadlock so that that different things we are going to discuss today okay so that is a, so today we will discuss the first technique in that and also the second so first is the deadlock prevention how we can uh, avoid the deadlock to uh, so in the deadlock prevention uh, this is the strategy which uh, related with 
that all the four condition responsible for the deadlock occurrence okay means in the deadlock prevention uh, we will try to uh, we will try to uh, dissatisfy or violate or break the one of the four condition which are responsible for the occurrence of deadlock now you know to prevent the deadlock from happening we have to concentrate on because of which different condition deadlock is occurring now already we have discussed in the previous lecture there are the four condition because of which deadlock occurs and which are that four condition first is a mutual exclusion then hold and wait then no preemption and the circular wait so these are the four condition because of which deadlock can occur but now if you want to prevent the deadlock if you don't want the deadlock to be happen then what can be done so for that purpose you already know why the deadlock can occur so you already know deadlock can occur because of that four condition if that four condition satisfy at the same time then your system goes into the deadlock your system goes into the deadlock in the sense you cannot able to process anything your system get hangs completely now if you if you want that your system should not go into the deadlock then what can be done what are the solution for that so to get the solution for that as you must know because of what the deadlock occurs so deadlock occur because of that four condition so if you want to prevent the deadlock then this you have to concentrate on how this four condition should not get satisfied means this four condition should get dissatisfied means we have to violate or break one of these four condition to be get occurred means if any of this condition does not get occurred if any of this condition does not get satisfied then also we can prevent the deadlock understood so if you want your system to be free from the deadlock then this is in the deadlock prevention such kind of strategy are designed where where the operating system will try to violate or break one of the four necessary condition required for the occurrence of the deadlock so violating that four condition or breaking that four condition uh, violating that uh, uh, some of the condition of the four or four itself or breaking the some of the condition of the four or preventing that condition to be get occur or dissatisfying that conditions that is the only solution to prevent the deadlock understood so uh, so in order to avoid the deadlock uh, in order to prevent the deadlock we have to concentrate on violation or breaking that four conditions means we have to concentrate on or uh, operating system need to concentrate on how this condition should not be get occurred this condition should not get satisfied understood and if this one of the any of this condition not get satisfied then definitely the deadlock can be get prevented in the system so there are the various condition that already i told you four conditions are there now is it possible to avoid these four condition or is it possible to violate or break or dissatisfy these four condition let's see now as already you know the first important condition because of which deadlock occurs is nothing but the mutual exclusion so already you know the what is the mutual exclusion and because of the mutual exclusion how the deadlock occurs so mutual exclusion is nothing but what there is a one resource and that resource is non shareable means only one process can utilize that resource at a time so if this one process will never release this resource then other process who are waiting for that resource goes in the infinite waiting and because of deadlock occur that is we know now how to dissatisfy or violate this condition you know you know to dissatisfy or violate this mutual exclusion condition the only solution is what the system only have system must have only the resources which can be in the shareable mode only means your computer system only have that kind of resource which are the shareable resources means more than one process can utilize that resource at a time that resources we are calling as a shareable resource so if your system have the shareable resource only then we can easily violate or dissatisfy this mutual exclusion condition because if the resources are shareable then number of process can access the resource at a time and no process will go into the infinite waiting okay so that is the only solution to dissatisfy or violate the mutual exclusion 
so in a system there are always some resources which are mutually mutually exclusive but as you know in our system there always all the resources cannot be mutually all the resources cannot be operate in the shareable mode so this in order to break this condition or violate this condition or dissatisfy this condition it is very difficult because in the computer system there there, there is always presence of such kind of resource which are not shareable like you can take the example of tape drives or printer so printer is a non shareable resource means only one user can give the print at a time and when the one user is giving the printer print at a time other users has to wait okay and that is the reason we can say the printer is a non shareable device or printer is a non shareable resource and because of that it is not possible to dissatisfy the mutual exclusion because some of the resources present in the computer system are non shareable so it is quite difficult to dissatisfy this condition and violate this condition but already i told you the solution if this condition don't if, if this if this condition if, if you want this condition to be get that dissatisfied then computer system must have all the resources shareable then and then only this condition can be get dissatisfied otherwise you cannot dissatisfy or violate the mutual exclusion condition in order to access the resource okay so that is the first way of preventing the deadlock that is what you have to dissatisfy the mutual exclusion condition understood and how you can dissatisfy the mutual exclusion condition by having the all the resources in your system in the shareable mode that is the only solution to this kind of uh, condition because of which deadlock occurs so i hope all of you understood the first condition because you, because of which deadlock occurs and if you don't want to if you don't want that deadlock should happen then how to avoid how to prevent that deadlock uh, what is the solution for that that we have discussed here okay now let's see the uh, second condition uh, because of which deadlock occurs and what solution we can apply so that deadlock can be get prevented so as already you know the second condition because of which deadlock occurs is nothing but the hold and wait okay that is what hold and wait so how we can break this condition or how we can uh, dissatisfy or violate this condition so all in order to uh, uh, break violate or dissatisfy this condition you must understood what is this condition and how because of this condition the deadlock can occur so in the previous lecture we already we have discussed hold and wait means what there is one process who is holding the one resource okay and this process p1 holding the resource for example r1 and still p1 sorry here i should there is a process p1 which is holding the resource r1 and still p1 is waiting for the resource r2 where that resource r2 is already holded by the process p2 so that is nothing but and this process p2 is waiting for the resource r1 so that is the hold and hold and wait condition means one particular process is holding some resource and waiting for some other resource to get it to complete its execution where that other resource is al already allocated to some other process so that is the hold and wait condition now how you can avoid this hold and wait condition because of you can see because of this hold and wait condition deadlock occurs because p1 is waiting for the r1 sorry p1 is waiting for the r2 by holding the r1 and p2 is waiting for the r1 by holding the r2 so that is the reason none of this will go into the uh, uh, none of this process can finish their execution as both of them will go into the infinite waiting so how to avoid this hold and wait okay so there are the three approaches to handle or uh, prevent the deadlock uh, by uh, violating the hold and wait condition or by dissatisfying the hold and wait condition so what is the first approach to dissatisfy violate or uh, uh, break the hold and wait condition so first approach is here so in this approach a process has to be first request all the resources it require for the execution means what in the first approach what is being said the process p1 okay suppose there is a process p1 
suppose process p1 is requiring the two resource r1 and r2 so this process p1 first request the resource r1 and r2 which is required for its execution and once that process p1 has acquired or get that resource only then process p1 should start its execution until the process p1 will not get the r1 and r2 the p1 should not get started execution even the p1 get the r1 and not the r2 even then p1 should not start its execution or p1 get the r2 but not the r1 even then also p1 should not start its execution means what the p1 should start its execution only when it will get the r1 and r2 both the resources at a time so because of this what will happen this approach ensure that the process does not hold some resource and wait for other resource so because of that what will happen p1 p1 will not hold r1 and wait for the r2 or p1 not hold the r2 and wait for the r1 p1 will start its execution only when only when both of the resources are uh, available and request for both of the request is granted for the p1 so that is the only uh, up one uh, one approach using which hold and wait can be avoided understood so there are some drawback of this condition also and drawback is that it is not implementable because it is not possible to predict in advance which resources will be required for the execution because in case of the computer system we cannot predict which resources will be required by the particular process understood so prediction in advance prediction before the that process will start execution it is very difficult part that is the reason uh, it is being said it is not implementable this first approach is not implementable but the solution can be provided and theoretical way that is i have explained you and the solution is what the process should acquire all the resource first and then it should start the execution it should not happen that p1 is requiring the four resources but it has got the r1 and it start execution and then it goes on holding the r1 and goes on waiting for the r2 r3 r4 it should not happen and solution for this what p1 only start the execution only when it will get all the resources available okay so that is the first approach which is not uh, practically implementable okay then second approach using which you can uh, prevent the hold and wait condition or you can violate the wait uh, hold and wait condition or you can dissatisfy hold and wait condition and that uh, second approach we are having here where in the second approach is what a process is allowed to acquire the resource it desire at the current moment after acquiring the resource it start execution now before making any new request it has to be compulsory release all the resources that it that it holds currently so this approach is efficient and implementable now what is this approach is saying suppose means p1 is the one process now p1 process requiring the total r1 r2 and r2 and the r3 these three resources it required but currently it is requiring the r1 only so currently it is requiring the r1 so p1 is then in in that case p1 is allowed to acquire the r1 okay currently it is required the r1 only so at the current moment p1 is granted the permission for r1 okay so after acquiring that r1 it should start its execution but when it is requiring the r2 then it should release the r1 first then it will be allowed to access the r2 when it has finished its working with the r2 then it should be allowed to request for the r3 and request will be granted only when it will release the r2 understood so that is the most practical uh, uh, practical solution okay here means whatever the resource p1 is requiring currently that resource only be given to the p1 and once p1 finishes its execution with that resource then p1 should release that resource first and then the p1 is granted to uh, acquire the next resource so that is the good approach okay as compared with the previous approach okay means p1 is uh, our particular process is granted to access the resource which is it requires currently okay once it finishes its execution with the current resource then it should be release that resource first and then the permission for new resource will be granted okay so this is the most efficient and the implementable approach then also we have the third approach in order to avoid the uh, in order to prevent the hold and wait condition which is the response for deadlock so uh, the third approach to dissatisfy hold and wait is what 
third approach we are having here with the timer means a timer is set after the process acquire any resource means suppose p1 requiring the three resource r1 r2 and the r3 r2 and the r3 so once the p1 acquire the r1 the timer will start for example timer is of the 5 second uh, sorry uh, for the 15 second so p1 can utilize the r1 only 15 second after 15 second the p1 should release the r1 and then only p1 will get access to the next resource for that also timer will be allowed timer will be set then p1 can utilize the r2 for the 15 second then again it will go to the r3 so a timer is set after the process acquire the any resource after the timer expires the process has to compulsory release the resource so if you set the timer of 15 second then p1 has to release the r1 after the 15 second and then he will be go for the next then next resource p1 can utilize for the 15 second then it go for the another so because of that what will happen the p1 will not hold that r1 and wait for the another resource p1 has to compulsory release the r1 after the time gate expires understood so that is the uh, practicable uh, practicable uh, practical and the efficient approach so approach 2 and the approach 3 are the quite uh, uh, practically implemented approach this can be followed to dissatisfy the hold and wait condition or to break or to violate the hold and wait condition okay so that is our second uh, uh, second way of deadlock prevention which is quite uh, quite uh, possible that hold and wait can be avoided or hold and wait can be dissatisfied by using uh, uh, any of these three approach okay so and if this uh, condition hold out wait condition can dissatisfy or the dissatisfy uh, or get violated then definitely the deadlock can be get prevented okay now let's see the third up, uh, third uh, condition and can we prevent the deadlock because of uh, dissatisfying the third condition that we have to see here okay so first you need to understand uh, uh, what is the third condition and because of uh, that condition how the deadlock occurs so in the previous lecture also we have discussed so no preemption uh, so that is the condition because of the deadlock occurs so no preemption means what if there is a process p1 is holding the resource r1 then p1 can utilize the resource r1 until the time p1 thinks it need the r1 so you cannot forcefully take the resource r1 from the p1 even there is a process p2 has come and process p2 is of higher priority than p1 even that even uh, even then also you cannot snatch or forcefully take the resource r1 from the p1 so p1 it is totally depend on the p1 when to release the resource r1 okay it is totally depends on the desire of the p1 it is completely the voluntary decision of the p1 because of that r1 will be get released you cannot forcefully take away the resource r1 from the p1 so whenever the p1 thinks that he don't need the resource r1 then only p1 can release the resource and that is called as a no preemption condition okay that is called as a no preemptive condition or no, no preemption so then what is the solution to uh, dissatisfy this condition or uh, break this condition so only solution is what forceful preemption means what forceful preemption so this condition can be violated by forceful preemption means if the p1 is holding the r1 and there is another process come which is of having the higher priority than the p1 then system should forcefully take this resource r1 from the p1 that is called as a forceful preemption so opposite to no opposite to the no preemption forceful preemption so by doing the forceful preemption only by snatching the r1 from the p1 forcefully that is only the solution to violate this condition okay so consider a process is holding some resource and request other resource that cannot be immediately allocated to it so then by forcefully preempting the currently held resource the condition can be violated or condition this condition can be break means consider p1 is holding the r1 and p1 is requiring the r2 so p1 is waiting for the r2 by holding the r1 so in that case you know to avoid you know to break the no preemptive condition the operating system can forcefully take this r1 from the p1 understood and allocate it to the another process 
until the p1 is waiting for the r2 so that is called as a forceful crimson or forcefully taking the resource from particular process that is the only uh, solution to our uh, to dissatisfy the no primitive condition okay so no primition to dissatisfy or violate the no primition only way is what do the forceful primition or do the forceful uh, snatching of resource from particular process okay so forceful primition uh, can be done uh, okay it can be done only when there is a high probability process has arrived in the queue what when there is a high priority process has arrived in the queue and that high priority resource uh, process required the particular resource which is holded by the some other process means consider p1 is holding the resource r1 now p2 has arrived in the queue p2 is having the p2 is having the more priority as compared to the p1 then in that case forceful primition can be done where forcefully r1 can be taken away from the p1 and it get allocated to the p2 so in the situation of high priority process in the queue then you can dissatisfy this condition or you can do the forceful primition to avoid the deadlock so that is the uh, third uh, solution to dissatisfy the third condition that is the no primition and to dissatisfy the no primition only way is what to do the forceful primition and if you do the forceful primition then definitely one process cannot hold the resource for longer period of time and because of that the the system will not get go into the deadlock system will not go into the infinite waiting so that is the third condition that you have to avoid that you have to violate or dissatisfy to prevent the deadlock okay now let's see the last condition uh, by dissatisfying this last condition is it possible to prevent the deadlock that we have to discuss now the last condition is the circular wait now before we go on thinking how to violate this condition or how to break this condition first we need to see what is that circular wait condition because of which deadlock can occur so in the previous lecture already we have discussed circular wait is nothing but what there is a process p1 which is requiring the resource r1 then there is a process p2 there is a process p2 sorry uh, there is a process p1 which is the requiring the resource which is holded by the p2 there is a process p2 which is requiring the resource which is holded by the p3 there is a process p3 which is requiring the resource which is being holded by the p1 so this is nothing but the called as a circular wait okay this is called as a circular wait so this condition can be violated by not allowing the process to wait for the resource in the cyclic manner so this is a cyclic manner waiting for the uh, resources because here p1 for example p1 is holding the resource r1 okay and p2 is holding the resource r2 and p3 is holding the resource r3 okay but p1 holding the r1 and p1 also requiring the p1 is also requiring the r2 p2 holding the r2 but p2 also requiring the r3 p3 is holding the r3 but p3 also requiring the r1 understood so that is considered as a circular waiting so only solution to avoid the circular waiting is what not allowing the process to wait for the resources in the cyclic manner that is the only thing can be done to dissatisfy this condition so to dissatisfy the circular wait only the thing that can be done is nothing but to not let the processes to wait for the resources in the cyclic manner okay not the cycle of waiting should not be formed okay cycle of waiting Uh, for uh, cycle of waiting by the process for the resources should not be formed that is the only solution 
so to violate the condition one approach is utilized here uh, in order to our in order to uh, uh, prevent the cycle to be get form the following approach is uh, utilized where a natural number is assigned to the every process means uh, sorry natural number is assigned to the every resources means each resources will assign with some numerical number like r1 r2 r3 r4 up to the rn okay and if there is a some process request then each process is allowed to request for the resources only in certain order means some the whatever the processes are there that process will allow to request for the resource only in certain order in the sense only in the increasing order or only in the decreasing order of that resources okay so a process first thing is what the resources will be number according to the natural numbers some numerical number will assign to the resources and second thing is what the process processes will be allowed to access the resource or request for the resource only in the certain order certain order in the sense in the increasing order or in the decreasing order okay for example we consider here the increasing order is followed if p1 is allocated the resource r5 okay now next time if p1 ask for the r3 r4 which are less than the r5 then such request will not be granted because which order is followed increasing order okay so for the p1 r6 can be allowed r7 can be allowed which are more which are which are in which are in the increasing order of the r5 but r4 r3 will not be allowed if the increasing order is followed so if this approach is followed then definitely the circular weighting can be get avoided so same example i have written here if p1 is process is allocated the resource r4 r5 now next time if p1 is asked for the r4 or r3 which are lesser than r5 which are in the decreasing order than r5 such request will not be granted then which request will be granted only the request for the resources more than the r5 will be granted so if this approach followed then cycle will not be formed and cycle will not be formed then definitely the circular weighting gate avoided violated dissatisfied and if this gate dissatisfied deadlock can be get prevented so that is the last uh, approach that's the last uh, condition because of which you can avoid you can prevent the deadlock okay so this is our first way of handling the deadlock where we have seen the deadlock prevention and how the deadlock can be prevented by dissatisfying the four condition which are responsible for the deadlock using that deadlock prevention can be done okay now next we have to discuss second up, second way of handling the deadlock now second way of handling the deadlock is the deadlock avoidance so deadlock avoidance is also the uh, way of uh, uh, avoiding the deadlock before it occurs okay now how the deadlock avoidance can be done so this strategy involves maintaining the set of data using which a decision made decision will be made whether to entertain the new request or not means using this strategy a certain database is maintained okay and using that database what what this database will contain this database will contain the information regarding the various resources available the information regarding the resource requirement for the certain processes this database will contain available resources this database will contain allocated resources to the certain processes this all the information will be contained by this database and by utilizing the database the decision will be taken if some new process comes then to this new process whether resources should whether the resources should be allocated or not that decision will be taken from this certain database okay if entertaining the new request causes the system to move in the unsafe state then it is discarded okay so by allocating the resource to this p7 it is first get checked what it is get checked it is get checked if you allocate the resource to the p7 if the system is going to the deadlock then that resources will not be get allocated to the p7 so these things will be get checked first and then the then the resources will be get finally allocated okay so 
this strategy requires that every process declare its maximum requirement of each process a maximum requirement of each resource type in the beginning okay so this this approach is quite uh, theoretically possible because you can see here what is the requirement of this strategy requirement is what each process first should declare how much resources they are going to require in the future okay so that is the reason i am saying this is quite theoretically possible but it is not practically possible that each process will know the future in the future how much resources they are going to be required so if the deadlock has to be avoided then it is a mandatory requirement that each process first declare how much maximum requirement of resources it is having okay so that is the main challenge with this approach that predicting the requirement of the process, predicting the requirement of the uh, process before its execution so each process has to do the prediction regarding the how much and which type of resources they are going to be required in the future understood so that is a quite impossible but uh, theoretically it is possible that is the reason this approach can be utilized to avoid the deadlock okay so then uh, you know to avoid the deadlock there is a certain algorithm is also being utilized and that is the banker's algorithm already in the practical session we have discussed this banker's algorithm with example and also we have implemented the practical on this also okay so banker algorithm is a one of the example of deadlock avoiding strategy using the banker's algorithm deadlock can be get avoided okay so banker's algorithm is what banker's algorithm is the resource allocation and deadlock avoidance algorithm which test all the request made by the process for the resources so this is the algorithm which utilize certain kind of database okay and this algorithm test before finally allocating the resource to the process what it test this algorithm test if certain process p7 come now this algorithm test if you allocate certain resource to this process p7 whether our system will be in the safe state or in the unsafe state now by allocating certain resource to the p7 if the system will be in the safe state then only the banker's algorithm will allocate the resource to the p7 but by allocating the this resource to the p7 if the system is going to the unsafe state unsafe state, unsafe state in the sense system may go into the deadlock then banker's algorithm will not allocate the resource to the certain process so same thing i have written here the banker's algorithm is the example of deadlock avoidance strategy so banker's algorithm is resource allocation and deadlock avoidance algorithm which test all the request made by the process for the resource and it check for the safe state and the unsafe state what it check it check for the safe state safe state in the sense deadlock will not occur if the resource get allocated to the process and unsafe state unsafe state means what deadlock can be occur if the this resource get allocated to the certain process so it check for the safe state if after granting the request after granting the request system remains in the safe state then it allow the request for the resource but after granting the request for the resource if there is a no safe state then it doesn't allow the request made by the process and in this way deadlock can be get avoided before it occurs so banker's algorithm is a theoretical possible it is not practically possible but still it can be applied to avoid the deadlock so these are the two main approach today we have discussed to handle the deadlock first approach that we have discussed is the deadlock prevention and second approach that we have discussed is the deadlock avoidance which can be get avoided with the help of the uh, one of the example of that i told you the banker's algorithm okay so that's it from the today's lecture so remaining two uh, strategies to handle the deadlock that we will discuss in the next lecture i hope today's session all of you understood if any doubt you can ask me in the comment section okay thank you all of you